Hello all, in this presentation, we are going to discuss about how to write discussion in research. This is your basic anatomy of your scientific research paper where you have introduction, methodology, results and discussion commonly called as IMRAD style. So under which we have several subheadings. So in this presentation, we are going to focus on this discussion. Anatomy of the scientific paper in introduction, we deal with what is known that is the current knowledge about the particular topic and what is unknown what are all the deficiencies or gap in that existing knowledge about that topic and how and why we should fill the gap that's where your need for the study or justification of the study lies and you develop your rational and purpose or hypothesis and through the methods that is what you are going to do will be represented then we have your results that is what you get from the study will be represented and in discussion the ultimate aim is how are these results going to fill the gap which you mentioned in introduction. I repeat in discussion we are going to fill the gap which we mentioned in the introduction to our study results. So in conclusion so what does this mean as for going forward. So that is the basic purpose of a scientific paper. The discussion part is more challenging because it most effectively demonstrates your ability as a researcher to think critically about an issue. You have to think critically about the issue and based on that you should develop creative solutions to the existing problems which you are mentioning in your research and you should formulate a deeper and more profound understanding of the research problem that you are studying. So this is the ultimate purpose of discussion that is you should apply your critical, critical thinking and you should suggest or develop creative solution to the problems to formulate a deeper and more profound understanding of the research problem that you are studying. So again if you dissect the discussion it consists of three separate paragraphs. Usually there will be the first introductory or the beginning part, the second intermediate or the middle part, the concluding or the end part and the third. In introduction we always start from broad context to narrow context. In discussion we start from narrow context to broad context. So we have the in the beginning part we usually mention about the answers of the research questions provided by the findings. We will have a few highlights about our methodology and about the problem. Then in the middle part, the study results will be compared with the previous works and we inter do interpretations of the results and we mention about the strength and limitations of the study. Then in the end of the discussion part, we conclude the study and the significance of the study to fill the gap will be mentioned. In discussion, we have consolidation or summary of important results. I repeat this is consolidation or summary not the repetition of the results. We are not doing the repetition of results but we are summarizing the results that is what is the answer to your research question will be mentioned here. Then we do interpretation of our study results that will be answered by what do the results mean. Then we will mention about the implications and significance of the study findings by answering the question why do these results matters. Then the most important part of our discussion is comparing with other studies. So this comparison with other studies will always try to fill the gaps present in the current existing knowledge. You need to discuss the reasons for difference. Why your study results are different or if it is expected different but the same with other studies that need to be discussed. So we will try to fill the gap in the existing literature and possible direction of further research will be mentioned. We mention about the possible or the potential bias present in the study. We mention the strength of our study and the limitations which are present in our study and we give recommendations based on the study results which we get. So all these uh, needs to be done by discussion. Here is the checklist for this discussion. So first is I have concisely summarized the most important findings. I have discussed and interpreted the results in relation to my research questions. I have cited relevant literature to show how my results fit in. I have clearly explained the significance of my results 
I have discussed the reasons for difference in my results. I have stated the potential bias of my study results. I have acknowledged and evaluated the strengths and limitations of my research. I have made relevant recommendations for further research or action. That was about the checklist for discussion. If here is one more shortcut to approach this discussion clearly, that is we have this equator network that is enhancing the quality and transparency of health research where you get reporting guidelines based on the study types. So the commonly available study types will be listed here and the reporting guidelines will be here and in that reporting guidelines you have a discussion section and in that discussion section a checklist based approach for writing that discussion will be present. You can cross check that also because based on the study types they have additional points to cover up in discussion apart from what I have mentioned in this presentation. Hopefully this presentation was useful to you. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this video, please share to your friends. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much.